Have you always dreamed of tackling a gorgeous quilt design with curved piecing but never had the nerve? Well, don't fear. My guest today will share a technique that masters curves using fusible web instead of difficult piecing. Welcome back, Elaine Walshmit. Elaine's a fabric, quilt, and wearable art designer. Elaine, I'm always looking for a shortcut, and I think we share the same penchant. Definitely, Nancy, and I'm excited about this program today when we're going to look at curves. During this two-part series, I'll show three basic block-making methods, starting with the traditional Drunkard's Path block. This throw that I've named Scarlet Sunset features the Applicurves technique. Fusible web with simple pressing and stitching techniques are all that are needed to make perfect curved quilt blocks. Applicurves, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effect threads, because creativity is never black and white. Koala sewing cabinets, hand-built in the USA by American craftsmen, customized for you. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. During this two-part series, Elaine and I are going to concentrate on quilt blocks that have curved pieces. And Elaine, your beautiful barn-raising quilt behind us is just made up of a series of Drunkard's Path blocks. That's right, Nancy. This is basically, right here, the little block, and it's just the color placement that creates this wonderful barn raising design. Now this contrasting block shows a concave and convex shapes molded together, and traditionally to do this, it's a challenge. Yep, I always hand pieced mine. And when you're working with hand piecing, traditionally this is the these are the two shapes. And to put them together, meet right sides together, match center points, match ends in either hand stitch or machine stitch. And you can see one layer is longer than the other and my curves never were curves. They were rather jaggedy. So rather than doing the difficult piecing, Elaine's method works with circles. And we're going to start off by fusing a circle to a background fabric and then cutting it into four sections. A lot simpler and you can see at this point, whether your circle or your curve is round. Right, and it's, it's exact every time. What, as you mentioned, we use fusible web. Mm -hmm. So we trace our circle onto the fusible web. Now there's a seven inch circle that we're going to trace, or if you would like to use a gauge to do the tracing, you can place a pinpoint at, in the center and measure the radius and I'll put the pencil point there and just make a circle all the way around. So on the fusible webs, you're going to just be making circle after circle after circle. We like to cut out the center of the fusible web because that reduces the amount mm -hmm. of fusible that we're going to have. So you can save that for another project. Exactly, leave about a fourth of an inch outside of those pencil mm -hmm. lines. And then we're gonna go ahead and fuse this on. And fuse it down, that's okay. great. Mm -hmm. So once we've got that ring, we can fuse it onto our fabric and this will be on the wrong side of the fabric. Great. Once we've got that finished, we are going to cut right on the line. So we left a fourth of an inch there, but now we can come by and cut just perfectly on our line. And that's your seam line. <laughs> exactly. So here's one that we've already prepared. Mm -hmm. And to do some quarter marks, you press it in half and then press it in half again. And we'll kind of give this a little finger press there. And you've done the same on the nine and a half inch block. Exactly. We'll take off the paper backing and now this is where you have to take a little time to align. If you can see, we have press marks of the square, press marks of the circle. So we get everything aligned. And what I like to do is pierce the center of the block and then pierce the center of the square. Once that is positioned, then I know I've got my circle centered perfectly. Well, thanks for getting that right. That's perfect. 
And once we have that on, and everything is lined up exactly, mm -hmm. we simply fuse our circle onto our nine and a half inch square. And we're now on the way to having four Drunkard's Paths blocks created. The next step is to stitch. Rather than seaming by hand or by machine those concave and convex curves together, simply top stitch or edge stitch, and there are many options for threads and needles. This shows a very invisible look. Clear nylon thread, a metafill needle, and a tiny zigzag. If you'd like to use matching thread, you can also work with this in a size 60 needle. A very sharp needle, Elaine, gives, as you told me, gives a very invisible look. But then for something visible, try variegated thread and again a metafill or an embroidery needle to get that nice look around the edge. For the most definite of all stitches, consider using two threads in the needle and a top stitching needle. The decorative stitches from your machine can be used whether they're an open stitch like a bl blanket stitch or a buttonhole stitch, a curved scalloped edge, and this looks like a an antique feather type of stitch. Nice contrast when you have almost solid fabrics for the Drunkard's Path circle and square. And now it's time just for some basics of the stitching. Right, Nancy. One of the basic stitches that we use is the tiny applique mm -hmm. that's used for the tiny zigzag that's used for mm -hmm. applique. I've set my machine to a width of 1.5, a length of 1.4 with the zigzag stitch. Then I folded my block in quarters in order to mark the 3, 6, 9, and 12 positions. I want to begin at one of those positions. I've also got an open toe embroidery foot and I'm using a contrasting thread today in order to show the stitching. Mm -hmm. I want my zigzag stitch to actually stay on the pink fabric and not cross over. That way if I get off a little bit I'm not going to um, risk not appliquing that piece down. And what's interesting about this is that the fusible web acts as a stabilizer. That little strip of web underneath allows that zigzag stitch to have some stability. Yes, and that's very important when you're dealing with such a small mm -hmm. um, stitch because it has a tendency to want to pull. And if the circle has been fused on perfectly round, then your block will be perfectly round, or have at least the quarter mark will be perfectly round. So you just zigzag stitch, whatever stitch you'd like to use. And in fact, you could change stitching at each quarter mark. That's right. If you want to have a lot of variety um, mm -hmm. and you're after a look so that your stitching shows, that's a great option. Mm -hmm. I'm almost finished stitching this, Nancy, but basically I would go around the entire circle. Once that is stitched, it's ready to cut the square. And here we have a finished sewn circle that has a variety of stitches. Now, probably in one quilt block, you would not have all these four variations, but perhaps you might like to experiment with that. But then again, at the 12, 9, 6, and 3 inch press marks, Elaine has changed her stitch location. And this decorative stitch, you can see how the decorative stitch sand, or excuse me, straddled the cut edge of the fabric. And you take a little time to go all the way around the edges. So after stitching, then it's time to do the cutting. And that's what we'll do next. After stitching the circles to all the squares, now it's time to create the Drunkard's Path block, making four blocks out of one big square. And you can see how easy this will be. We're basically lining this up four and three-fourths inches, making one vertical cut without moving the block. You're cutting it right down the center. Exactly down the center. Um, and then across, cut the other way. And from that, we have our four Drunkard's Path blocks, all perfectly sized and shaped and ready to put into a design. This design kind of shows four different stitches around the edges. You would choose one of the stitches for your quilt design and really not move that initial center block set for the sunrise design. The, excuse me, it's the sunrise quilt, but this is a barn raising design. We have four designs in the middle, but then it radiates out, and that's where the unique design comes into play. We have some additional blocks cut out, and we'll just kind of lay these out so that you can see how you create 
the design. So we have four in the middle, and then what was used on the outer edge is now used in the middle section. And so I'll have you start to lay it some Maori Lane, and I'll do the same. It always uh. helps to have a, a <laughs> nice diagram as you're doing this because it can really be a challenge to get them all in the right spot, but once you start laying them out, yeah, it kind of falls into place. So what was green on the outside now becomes green in the middle, and presto, we are having the beginnings of the, this unique barn raising design. We're gonna have another beautiful quilt. This is, this is really lovely and really wasn't difficult to do. Now you don't have to work with always this large block sizes and we'll just show this beautiful framed art. This is nice. Right, we started out with a six inch block here and then once they're cut, these are cut down after the circle is stitched and cut mm -hmm. to two and a half inch blocks. So these are a finish of a two inch block and it's just a mini version of the Scarlet Sunset quilt we have behind us. Uh -huh. um, and I added some applique in the center to so, highlight. So we don't always have to make quilts that cover our beds exactly. or our walls. We can decorate yeah. our walls yes. Very just nice. as easily. And here's another Drunkard's Path design called Harvest Bloom. This is another small design, a table runner. And we have the Drunkard's Path being positioned in a totally different configuration. So instead of having this half circles, quarter circles going to the middle, they're going to the outside. And here's a close up of this quilt. And in the book that accompanies today's program, you'll get the applique designs, but the center is what we really want to concentrate on. And we have again some layouts for you. And as we look at this, instead of having those circles go to the inside, they just flip. Just turn them and you can see the de unique design change. And then, Elaine, you did another setting of triangles. Right, that, that square is then set on point, mm -hmm. setting triangles, and it's the perfect platform to put your applique, and it's all, this block is often called the spiced pinks block. It's, it's very attractive, very contemporary looking. The Cabana Throw is another one of Elaine's terrific designs. This has a festival feel with linear designs of the quilt going down the side, or excuse me, the linear designs of the Drunkard's Path, but then you've added some additional work. Right, the Drunkard's Path are put in a strip, and then I add, and it's kind of challenging to see it on this white fabric, but there's actually a strip of white, and that made an area for me to add the applique. So you can combine Drunkard's Path designs, curved designs with appliques, and as we lay this out, this is what I think is just an interesting thing about quilting because there, there are really no limitations. We'll put some Drunkard's Path with the curves going to your left in the linear position and then fill it in. How about that? Then we cut our setting triangles. We began with a seven and a fourth inch square and we cut them twice on the diagonal to create these setting triangles. And you can see how, here how our strip is being mm -hmm. created. And this just looks like it's weaving. Right. Maybe how it got the name Drunkard's Path, right? <laughs> so here we've shown you various layouts of working with this one circle stitched to a square and cut into four pieces. It's easy, as you can see, to create curves. Once you learn the basic applique curve technique, Expand your block making options. The hearts and gizzards block, a positive negative arrangement, piece traditionally required four curved seams plus a straight seam. With the applique curves technique, two identical blocks are generated at once with no curved piecing. Elaine has made many beautiful quilts using the hearts and gizzards block, and that's kind of an unusual name for a quilt block, but since most of the quilt blocks were named and designed probably in the early 1900s, I think we need to know the origin. In this block, you can see the heart shape and the chicken gizzard shape, so that's how the name came to be. And actually, Nancy, I saw an old quilt when uh -huh. I was considering the Apple Curves technique and av upon examining it I realized this would lend it this block lends itself perfectly to this technique it certainly does and the fusible technique that we worked with with the 
Drunkard's Path has just changed slightly with a curved shape for the heart. And the book that accompanies today's program is a heart shape, or you can create a heart shape yourself and trace numerous heart shapes on the paperback fusible web. You'll have a whole stack. And then you'll need to trim away some of the middle section, leaving approximately a fourth of an inch on the outer side and roughly cut a fourth of an inch on the inner area. Now we'll show you a project that you can use this leftover section in just a few minutes. So you're not going to waste this, but do this trimming. This is a positive negative technique and so Elaine has designed this so that you fuse this heart shaped ring to the wrong side of the fabric and as you might guess you're going to do some trimming. Trim around the line and you're going to make two. Exactly. Just like we did with the drunkard's path block we're going to cut out our shapes but this time it's a heart shape. Mm -hmm. The heart the reason that we went with the heart shape is so that it lines up perfectly on mm -hmm. your eight and three fourths inch squares. So not only one heart per block, but two. Alternate corners and then it's... And alternate colors. So mm -hmm. you've got your dark hearts on your light block, your light hearts on the dark block. Just like with the Drunkard's Path, here's a close-up of stitching. You're going to use matching thread, matching thread to the gold, and stitch around the heart shape with a tiny zigzag. Or you could use a blanket stitch. The choice is yours, but we're using a zigzag stitch right now. And when stitching around the heart-shaped curves, Elaine used rayon thread. I like to use a lighter weight thread, mm -hmm. and in that way, the stitching is less noticeable. And the, the thread is lightweight as well. So then after stitching, you have a couple of layers of fabric. Right. You'll notice on this block, we've got the two layers. And because on the quilt, we have many seams joining together here, mm -hmm. we want to reduce the bulk. This block has had one layer mm -hmm. cut away and that simply reduces the bulk for when we're going to join these seams here. Once this step is created, we can go ahead and cut our blocks. I use the center points of the hearts as a reference as well as the edges of the quilt and you're going to trim each block. Making two halves obviously and we said earlier in the program you're going to create two at once and this is this is how it's going to happen. Once these two blocks are cut we're going to use quarter inch seams. We're going to join one of the blocks that has a dark background with one with a light, one with the light, with the dark. And stitch with a fourth of an inch seam allowance, a standard seam. And you really don't have to worry about matching those points because they just do. And here you have your hearts and gizzards block, two at once. Now remember we told you about the small piece of fusible web that was left over? Well, here's a smaller project, a little table topper. And this table topper was made with much smaller pieces. And it might be a little difficult to see where the heart shape is designed, and here it is. You can see the hearts and gizzards in a mini scale. Or you can create hearts and gizzards out of a floral print and as a coordinating, we have this beautiful quilt. This is lovely, Elaine. It is one of my favorites. And we have used the hearts and gizzards in a column and then have the border print or print fabric in other columns. So you combine two types of techniques. Right, kind of like with the Drunkard's Path, we just did a strip of the mm -hmm. blocks and it creates a whole new look. So we have many options for these curved hearts and gizzards, a unique block design, and we can use it all by not stitch it all without stitching a curve, just by pressing, fusing, and then stitching. Today in Nancy's Corner section, we're going to take a look at garment sewing. Not any garment sewing, but sewing with wool. My guest today is Carol Battenberg. Carol is a sheep producer, a sewer, a quilter, and a director for the Make It With Wool program. Carol, Make It With Wool has been around a while. Yes, it has. It originated in 1947 and is still going strong, 61 years. 
I happened to know about this for many years because when I was in high school, I entered, at that time it was called the Make It Yourself with, for, right. with Wool Contest. Mm -hmm. And this coat, my dear mother saved this for me, and I made that when I was a junior in high school. I went to the Make It Yourself with Wool Contest. I didn't get that far, but I still have the coat. It doesn't fit, but I thought I'd bring it along just for grins. Yes, you know, very often when I'm in a, a fabric store or anywhere talking about Make It With Wool, people tell me, I know about that contest. Uh -huh. I was in it at one time. And the sewing that takes place and the workmanship is phenomenal. Yes, it is. Once you get to the state level. And the, every year in January, there's the national contest. But states have all state contests and regional contests. And that's what we're here to encourage those of you who sew garments, sew with wool, that this is a great experience and great way to be creative. There are a few states um, who still have regional competitions. Mm -hmm. Most, however, have state competitions. Okay. And from that, the winners of the state, the junior and senior divisions of the state competition advance to the national competition, which is held during the American Sheep Industry National Convention every year. And the, the most recent national conference was in San Diego, and yes, we it had was. had many beautiful garments of yes. winners. And here's a photo of the grouping of the final winners. And you can see a variety of garments and many multiple pieces. Yes, many, many of the the winners that advance to the national competition have made ensembles, which mm -hmm. are would maybe a coat, a jacket, a vest, pants. Sure. Very, very complete and very beautiful. They certainly are. Now the the junior and the senior levels are judged very competitive judging and here's the winner of the junior division. Mm -hmm. um, Marissa Linton from North Carolina won the junior division. Mm -hmm. And then this next image is, is of the senior division winner. A Meredith Olds from Kansas. And some of the distinctive things that judges look for during this competition include? Well, uh, first of all, the garments must be 100% wool. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, the wools that people use are tested each year to make sure yeah. that they are definitely wool. Um, on your website, you also give instructions on how to test the fi fabric for the 100% qualifications. Yes, there's the, there's the old um, Clorox test, however, since last year, all mm -hmm. garments must be tested by a state wool lab. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. To ensure their authenticity, <laughs> to make sure well, that it's... Well, it is a wool contest, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And the, the um, primary responsibility of the, of the contest is to promote wool. Yes. And that's what we're okay. all about. Of course. And then the adult winner... Was Kathy Holt, mm -hmm. Holter, excuse me, um, from Maryland. A charming outfit. All these ensembles are, are really lovely. Now, when many years ago when I entered this contest, it was called Make It Yourself. Mm -hmm. But now it's Make It With Wool. And that's because you can make a garment and have another model wear it. That's right. That's called the Made For Others competition. Not all states do include that. Um, there's also the wearable accessory mm -hmm. uh, category. And then there are a few states that have quilt and Afghan competitions for quilters and for knitters and, and that Certainly. sort of thing. And here's the winner of the apparel designer division. Mm -hmm. This gentleman made this beautiful plum outfit. Yes, yes, and they were from um, Texas, Houston Community College in Texas, and they of course were guests at the national competition and had a chance to model and, and um, show off that beautiful outfit. It's really stunning. All these outfits were just really charming. So again, you can go to sewingwithnancy.com, click on Nancy's Corner, and then you can find the address, the URL, where to go to the Sheep USA and to find this information and make it with wool. Because sewing with wool, it's kind of like cutting butter with a warm knife. Yes, it it is. is smooth, it is tactile, it's an enjoyable process. And quilters who are quilting with wool say the same thing yes. about that. You know, if they're, they say their needle slides right through yes. the wool, and a lot of them, if they're using a bat, mm -hmm. um, which isn't always necessary with a wool quilt, Certainly. but they say it just slides through. And once you've, once you've done quilting with wool, then you like to continue to do it. Certainly. 
So this is kind of an encouragement to you, for you. If you haven't worked with wool for a while, it, a lot of the enjoyment is in the process. Yes, Not it is. just the finished process, but we all know that as sewers and quilters, it's in the process. So, mm -hmm. Carol, final words from you? Well, I guess I would say that anyone who is interested in the competition mm -hmm. can go to Sheep USA and find the name of the director in your okay. state and the date of the contest Great. in that particular state. Well, well, thank you for being with us okay. and sharing this information. And thank you for watching Sewing with Nancy and our first program of Applicurves. Elaine Walshmitt will be back next time with some additional information on working with that great fusible technique. Bye for now. Elaine Waldschmidt has written a fully illustrated book entitled Applicurves, which serves as the reference for this two-part series. It's $17.49 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com backslash 2305. Order item number Z1659, Applicurves. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at SewingWithNancy.com for more information on this program. Sewing with Nancy, TV's longest airing sewing and quilting program with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Cabinets, Clover, Amazing Designs, and Class A Needles. Closed captioning funding provided by Rowenta. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.